Happy October, friends. Tis the season. I've been spending my entire morning in bed reading because I have been really bad at reading, not prioritizing it for valid reasons uh, that I will explain in a bit. But it's been a busy month, like September in itself, just with work and personal things and social commitments and, and trying to keep up with my habits and, you know, creative pursuits. And this past week that we just are coming out of was excruciatingly <laughs> hectic and full of chaos and out of routine. And today it's Sunday and I just wanted to spend the entire morning in bed. My phone is off. I'm having my weekly tech fast that I've also have not been very good at because this whole month has been just crazy and it just felt so nice to wake up and just read, make some coffee, hang out in bed, and I finally finished Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I've, it took me basically the entire month of September to read this, and it was the only book that I read, and I just finished it this morning, October 1st, so I'm still technically calling this a book I read in September, but that just goes to show how I have not been reading and I have so many books on my reading list for fall as you saw in my last video and I want to say hello to any new subscribers because I know there's a lot of new people around here that have joined the community and welcome happy to have you here so this video I just want it to be cozy fall days in my life we have a few things happening this week and today at least my main goals are to finish this <laughs> so we did that I also need to do October planning and intention setting just my whole you know slow planning routine of getting my head on straight for the upcoming month because there's a lot going on there's a lot I want to do and I just need to kind of sit and have my little planning moment and I think I'm gonna go to Barnes and Nobles and sit in the cafe and do that to get me you know in the mood out of the apartment and out on the scene and enjoy that little bit and my next book that I'm I already started reading this because I had jury duty <laughs> a few days ago and this was a great book for me to at least start while I was there because jury duty is a lot of waiting and I'm on page 130, so we're almost halfway through this book. I got a really good chunk of it read in like two hours while we were at the courthouse, and now this is my next book to read, and it's pretty quick, I would say, because it's about 350 pages, so it's not too long. Actually, no. I think it's only 320, 24 pages, I think that's what it was. So this is like a very quick read for me or at least it should. So I wanna get through a good chunk of this today and finish it very early in this week. And then I need to decide what other book that I want to read because it's spooky season. It's October, ah. So yes, Lunday Seance Society by Sarah Penner is my next book that I'm gonna be focused on reading. I'm enjoying it so far. I mentioned in my fall TBR video that The Lost Apothecary, which was Sarah Penner's, Sarah Penner's book before this, was disappointing to me and I have lowered my expectations for this book and so far I'm not like enthralled it, it's definitely holding my attention and it I, I am interested in the story and the characters but I can already sense it's not going to be like amazing and I kind of already know that from the previous book that I read um, and Royal Assassin it really picked up at the end as Robin Hobb does this is book two of the Farseer trilogy and now I'm ready to read the next one, but it's gonna have to wait until I get through all of my fall books because there's too many books I need to read. And let me, I wanna show you guys my cute little bookmark. Look how stinking cute this is. It's from Anna Lunick, who is an amazing artist. And I'm on her, subscribe to her Patreon, but I bought this from her shop. I will link it below. She's having a fall drop soon. I love her artwork, and it's been a fine companion to my books. All right, the plan now is that I need to get around, get up, and prepare for my cafe trip. So, let's go, friends!
So we're going to start the Graveyard book by Neil Gaiman. I haven't read or listened to any Neil Gaiman books. This book is actually a book club pick in Morgan Long's Patreon, and I thought I would listen along because the audiobook is apparently really good, and I was able to get it through Libby, so that's always a plus. Let's start this and sketch. I think I know I'm going to do a pile of books or like my autumn reading list. I sketched this out because again, we need to simplify. <laughs> so that was my plan. Let's see how it goes. Harper Children's Audio presents The Graveyard Book, written and performed by Neil Gaiman. Text copyright 2008 by Neil Gaiman. Production copyright 2008 by HarperCollins Publishers. friends it is later in the week I have reading updates for you hence why I'm popping in and this morning we finished the London Seance Society and it was meh it was not great I would have been fine not reading it so again another kind of disappointing read from Sarah Penner and I think I'm done <laughs> reading any of their books moving forward after two not so good books. Again, just like with The Lost Apothecary, the the plot and the premise and the like vibe and the the setup, it was all in alignment with what I love with the whole like historical fiction and London and secret societies, the Victorian era and the mediumship and spirituality, supernatural aspects was all great, but just the way it was weaved together and in the book and the story, the characters, it just did not did not come out the way that I had hoped the story would come to be. Oh, the other thing about this book was that I felt like the author's writing, like she thought the readers like were, like she was thinking were stupid. So like there was a lot of explaining and telling about things that had just happened. Like, so like you'd have a, a scenario and then like the next chapter, you'd have an explanation trying to clarify anything that was said in that previous chapter which i thought was just repetitive and uh, <laughs> the other aspect of this book is that we had two povs so it was switching between our main character lena and this other character mr morley uh who's one of the main characters in the in the story so i don't mind you know changing povs i i like it in a stories but I, I guess I like that in this story. It gave us the variety and the two perspectives of, the, of these two contrasting characters. So that I will give a point to. And the whole, like this takes place in 1873, but I did not feel like I was reading like a book and characters and a story set in the late 19th century. So the writing just did not come through on that front for me either. Overall, a 2.5 rating for me. I just updated my Goodreads and Disappointing. Disappointing read. Now I've selected 
two books that I want to read next. This is kind of my process. I have to kind of feel out what I want to read next, especially if I have a large reading list of options. So this morning I, I have two options. We have Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman and Zero Days by Ruth Ware. So we have two different types of books and I started reading the first few pages of each one and I want to read both. Maybe I'll start reading each simultaneously. Ruth Ware, we, we love a mystery, we love a thriller. I love a book that holds my attention, like a page turning. So this one definitely would fit that bill. And then Magic Lessons, I just started reading the first few pages and like the prose and the ambiance. And of course this is about the Owens sisters who were witches and this is part of the Practical Magic series. So my third book in the series that I'm reading in the order of publication but this takes us back to the 1600s with the original like bloodline of the Owen sisters. So I want to read this and I want to read this. This is about a couple who work in IT and security and one of them is murdered. And then the other spouse who isn't murdered gets wrapped up in this investigation. And it just sounds really interesting. And the first few pages were definitely grabbing my attention. So both are good contenders. I think I'm going to probably take both of these to work with me and and see what I want to read on my lunch break and I don't know we'll do an update later on which I end up reading huh. and I'm also still listening to Neil Gaiman's the the graveyard book on audiobook it needs to go back to my library in three days so we're trying to get through that book as well I'm listening to it in the car on my way to work and like when I'm multitasking and I have capacity to listen to it. So it's really cute so far. It's about this little boy who ends up in this graveyard full of ghosts and he's the only human and he has some privilege or power. I'm not sure if I missed it or if we don't know yet to be in this graveyard. Maybe the inhabitants of the graveyard like allow him to stay. And so far he's met a human friend named Scarlet and we kind of saw their little adventure together in the graveyard and it's really sweet. The Narration is by Neil Gaiman, so it's definitely like autumnal and spooky and there's music. So it's definitely a fun listen and a good kind of backdrop to my reading. So yeah, those are my reading updates. I'm actually off to work. This whole week's been kind of chaotic. The whole past few weeks of work has been chaotic. So I'm really relishing my time reading when I'm not at work and also drawing. Uh, I guess I have drawing updates for you guys too, which I don't know. Again, I'm filming two different vlogs and it's been difficult. So, all right, I'm off to work. Welcome to the end of the video, friends. I feel like this vlog, I don't know. I hope it was fun and engaging. I feel like in terms of me filming over this past week, it was really <laughs> not up to my usual planning and standards, but I hope it was fun. I got to talk about books and actually where we left off, I wasn't sure if I was gonna read Ruth Ware or Alice Hoffman and I, I've been reading Zero Days. I'm about halfway through and it's really engaging. I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, the beginning definitely was quick and got me engaged into the story and kind of gory, dare I say, for, for Ruth Ware, but definitely still a thriller mystery. It's definitely a little more fast paced than I know some of her books are. Again, Ruth Ware could be either slow mystery or more fast paced thriller or a combination of both. So I think this is definitely giving us a good combination of mystery thriller genre that we love. And I'm really intrigued by the IT uh, security aspect of this because it's about a couple who work as sec IT security specialists, but not necessarily what you might think. So the husband, and this is not giving anything away, but this was like the first chapter. So it's a husband and wife team, they work like they have their own company and they test the security systems of 
companies. So they will essentially break into a company's like server and into their building to test how secure their security is. And the husband works at home and does all the behind the scenes like and essentially hacks into the computer systems. And the, the wife is the person that goes into the building and like breaks in and that's kind of the opening scene that we have. So that whole like scenario was really engaging and fast paced and it was really a fun way to start off the story. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm hoping to finish it soon. I'm also listening to The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I'm almost done. I'm trying to finish this before it's due back tomorrow morning at 8.22 a.m. So I have an hour and 52 minutes left, but I'm listening at 1.5 point speed to speed that up. Um, I, so Neil Gaiman's narrating and he has a British accent. And when there's an accent, I prefer to listen to it, listen to an audiobook at normal speed. But of course, you know, I'm very much on a, on a war path to, to read as much as I can. So I've been re listening to this at 1.5 speed and it's been, it's been okay for me to kind of hear the story, but I really like to savor a story and listen to it at its normal speed, or if it's just really not engaging, like I, I will speed it up. So let me know if you guys, like what speed you normally listen to audiobooks on. Is it based on like the accent of the narrator, the type of book you're reading, you know, I would love to hear your thoughts. I feel like a lot of people listen to audiobooks fast, but I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys like to do. Editing Sheila popping in to let you know that I finished both books, Zero Days and The Graveyard Book. Zero Days, it was okay. Definitely not my favorite Ruth Ware book. I, I, I liked It Girl better, which came out last year. It is still not one of my favorite books. So it's definitely like mid tier on my list of Ruth, Ruth Ware books that I love, but it was definitely worth a read. Good for a spooky season. The cyber crime security IT aspect was really interesting. I can't say it was definitely fast paced throughout the entire book. The beginning was definitely like swooped you up and then got you kind of sucked in. And then it was a little bit more of a like slow, you know, slow burn after that. Uh, if you're thinking of like really fast paced thriller, it was not that, but it was definitely like it held your attention, I would say. In the graveyard book, I finished that actually so we went to stay with my friends and I was trying to finish it like before it was due back at 8.30 in the morning on whatever day that was. And I, I fell asleep listening to it the night before and didn't finish it and then it automatically returned. But the good thing is that the book is not in like high demand through my library through Libby. So I was able to check out the audiobook and like the actual ebook again. And I think there was definitely parts that I missed while I was like scrambling to listen to it so fast. Like towards the end of the book, like chapters six, seven, eight is when I started to kind of like tune out and I feel like I need to go back and kind of like read those parts again and I might do that with the ebook but like the whole like vibe and storytelling the characters a really cute children's literature book that I recommend for spooky season and kind of a dark book too for for kids like dealing with death and like cemeteries and graveyards and there's a lot of like historical elements in it as well that I enjoyed so definitely a fun quicker read as well for this season. All right, back to old me. <laughs> and with that said, I'm ending the video. We're actually heading out to go to my friends for the weekend and I'm gonna start filming my next vlog after this, which is gonna be more like a spooky Halloween vlog as we get closer to Halloween. I'm really excited because we're going to an amusement park and it's all decked out for Halloween and I've never been to, I've been to this uh, amusement park. We've been, I've gone there since I was a kid. It's very nostalgic and love it so much. And but I've never been there when they've done this Halloween, you know, extravaganza every year. So everything's going to be decorated. They they have a haunted mansion ride. Just so many spooky, exciting things. And that will be the beginning of my next vlog. So make sure you're subscribed to see that vlog. And with that said, I'm gonna go because we gotta go. We gotta hit the road. We're heading out. And thank you for being here, friends, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.